Welcome Windows and Mac users. Well, if you've been watching the news lately, then you might know that the latest Windows update may be deleting all of your files. I think they've pulled that if I've heard correctly. And the Mac latest uh, version uh, combined with the T2 chip inside of your Apple device will prevent it from being repaired by any third-party repair shops, which means you are locked into getting repairs exclusively by Apple and Apple authorized dealers, and there's a whole lot of information out there that says this is not the best plan for you. It costs a whole lot more money, and it is certainly damages our ability to choose who fixes our devices or whether we can fix our devices themselves. I've discussed the uh, in a little bit more depth about the Apple issue. The Windows issue, I haven't discussed a whole lot, but if you look around, you'll find a lot of people talking about this. And uh, it does appear that if you were, <laughs> funny, funny, not signed in, utilizing OneDrive to back up your stuff, everything got deleted from your documents. That seems to be what was going on. Now, I have heard that uh, that uh, version, that update from Windows 10 may have uh, been pulled, but... It's just, I mean, it's just kicking the can a little bit further down the road. I want to talk to you today about possibly switching over to Linux, at least for your home computer, for the things that you're doing that are not, not necessarily your work stuff. And the majority of people, I think, following uh, these videos probably has a home computer and you probably have a job which furnishes you anything else that you need. My recommendation is where at all possible, you wanna use something that is free and open source, like Linux. All right, so the reason I use Linux is because it does not track what I'm doing, it doesn't force its updates on me, it doesn't do weird things to my systems. Yeah, there may be times that the updates will fail and things like that, certainly worthy of, of consideration. But uh, what I wanna do is just give you a, a brief overview with some extra links and reviews, and I'm gonna put those links in this video. Uh, and in the description down below, and as well in the uh, carded up in the video, on if the video platform you're watching this on supports that. So the first thing you want to do is watch some videos on Linux. And I've done a, uh, a fairly recent series on just some considerations, how you make the change. I brought in some, uh, some discussions with TechLore on some of the things he has uh, an idea of. So I have a playlist of some of those, including some different Linux desktops, Linux versions you might want to look into, and just the various types of things that you want to do. So first start by watching some videos and get yourself familiar with what you might be in for, which by the way, is not very difficult. The second thing you want to do is make a backup of all your files. If you happen to have, have uh, music, if you have um, photos, you have videos, you have documents, all that kind of stuff, just save it. Save it on an external drive somewhere because your Linux distribution should be able to open up all of those without a problem. Uh, make a backup of all of your files and then start looking around at which Linux distribution you might want to use. Invest in yourself in some USB drives that are USB 3 drives. So these USB 3 drives, you can run an entire Linux operating system on this without impacting your current system, whether you are on uh, Apple or whether you are on Windows. Now, of course, the latest T2 chip, so if you have a Mac, uh, um, a 2017 or above um, Macintosh, uh, uh, what is it, the MacBook Pro, uh, if you have those or the, some of the latest, uh, the latest Apple hardware, you're going to need to go into Safe Boot and enable the ability to boot off of a USB drive. On Windows, you might need to do the same thing, get into your BIOS and just make sure that the third, first thing that's going to boot is going to be a USB drive. This will enable you to boot off of the USB drive. Now, in some cases in Windows particularly, you may also have to disable Secure Boot. Don't worry about it. Uh, the Secure Boot is more of a gimmick to lock you into the Windows or the Mac OS than it is to have any form of security. Um, that is a as a general. So. Install Linux on a little external USB drive and start using it without damaging or replacing your other operating system first. Okay, because this is going to, if you fall in something you simply can't do on Linux, you'll fall back into your Windows or Mac system so that you can go ahead and get your task done. And then you can go back later and figure out how to do that on Linux when you can. And I promise you, nearly everything you do, you can probably get done on Linux with free and open source software. Very important, very important to do, thing to do. 
And so uh, the last step is, is simply start using it. Start getting used to it. The first times you run the applications, uh, the first time you're trying to do tasks, it is going to take you a little bit more time. Just remember the first time it was when you first used your operating system. Or if you were one of many people who started on Windows and moved to Mac or started on Mac and used to Windows, remember how it took a little bit longer to get something done. The same thing is going to happen on Linux because it is a different operating system, but it is a good, strong, secure operating system which will enable you to get your tasks done without being a taskmaster to your overlords, Windows and Apple. Okay, and that is uh, that is really the important, and that's the reason I do this channel, so that you have the ability to get in here and try out, test out different operating systems. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, of course, if you have a little bit more time, if you're like, man, ugh, I don't like what I'm doing, but I'm going to keep what I have right now, I encourage you to dabble with Linux. If you're in the longer transition, the first thing you might want to start doing is figure out how to use FOSS software free and open source software because a lot of the stuff that you'll find on Linux is also cross-platform. If you're using Soundbooth from Adobe, try and figure out how to do your stuff with Audacity instead. It's going to save you a lot of money in the long run. And frankly, I have Soundbooth and I have Audacity and I prefer Audacity. I'm doing audiobook production on Audacity. I've done a lot of other things on Audacity. I'm doing podcasts on Audacity. I do some basic video, or uh, excuse me, basic audio editing on Audacity, and it is cross-platform. What cross-platform means is the available, the software is available, and you can keep it, keep your current system, keep your Windows, keep your Mac system, and then you can install that onto your system. And then you can get used to using it. And what happens if in six months time, you're used to using Audacity? Maybe you're using Caden Live for video editing. Maybe you're learning how to use LibreOffice instead of Microsoft Office. Um, you start using and looking for all of these free and open source alternatives. Look for those things, install them on your existing computer and learn how to do them in your spare time. And then six months down the road, you can go, all I need to do is just switch to Linux. I'm using the same exact applications. Easy. Easy. And the great thing about Linux is there's a lot of different desktops. If you just really love the Windows look and you just want to stick with that look, that style, that feel, that workflow, Cinnamon, Mate, XFCE by default has that. If you just love the way the Mac operates, look for Pantheon, which is um, elementary OS. You're going to find Pantheon there. Uh, look for uh, GNOME or GNOME builds. Uh, some of them are designed already to look like Mac. Some of them don't. Uh, eLive is a distribution that looks like Mac uh, as well. You can find those types of distributions. If you want to do something as a hybrid in between, Deepin can be set up nearly like Mac or like Windows. Solace is kind of like a combination of Mac, Mac slash Windows type approach. And then, of course, things like KDE are so highly customizable, you can turn them into any of them or something all on your own. There's a great thing, and I have videos about all these types of desktop environments, all these different types of Linux distros. Which one do you use? I would just start in with something easy that's user-friendly. Uh, my number one go-to for new people on Linux is Linux Mint Cinnamon. Uh, there's also two other varieties. You have XFCE and Mate, uh, Linux Mint uh, as well. Um, Ubuntu has a lot of flavors. If you want to try out that Solace or that Deepin, go with Ubuntu. They have a Solace and a Deepin variety of those. Uh, the Ubuntu main one is set up on GNOME, so that's a little bit different. Their setup is a little bit different from Mac or from uh, or from Windows, but it certainly is something refreshing if you're just looking for something different. It's a great option. Uh, look at that. If you're more of a computer tech type of guy and, and, and you really want to dive in and learn all the more, OpenSUSE, uh, Manjaro, uh, and for those really, really want to dive in, Arch. But I would probably not do Arch as your first distribution. Uh, get into it a little bit. OpenSUSE, Manjaro. Manjaro is basically Arch. It's just a lot easier to work with. Um, so those are some of my tips and suggestions. So Windows has been deleting your files, and if, if Mac has been keep preventing you from changing your speakers, consider making the switch to Linux. Have a look at the videos on this channel. Have a look at the, what I've linked in the description down below and what I have uh, carded in the video as well. So thanks for coming along on this video.
I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.